So the tools, we're going back to mechanism now, the mechanism uh, mod pack. Oh, just look at that mess of pipes behind me. So there's different tools that we can actually have in mechanism. If we have a look here, we can see we've got a jetpack. We've got some free runners that help you uh, when you fall, you don't take any damage. We've got a flamethrower. How awesome is that flamethrower? We've got some scuba gear so, uh, scuba gear so we can breathe underwater. Jetpack again over there. And we've got the atomic dissembler and a little robot that follows you around. Now, I want to create this today, the Atomic Dissembler, because it's got some very, very, very good characteristics. So how do we make it? Well, we need some enriched alloy, some atomic alloy, and an energy tablet. So let's pop next door, shall we, and actually get all these items, because, yes, we've got all these items next door, and we can actually utilize them. So let's close that one. And head over here. So if I, what did we need? So we need some enriched alloy. So let's get a couple of them. Where are they? There we go. So we needed four of them. One, two, three, four. What else did we need? We needed an energy tablet. One energy tablet created. What else do we need? We need an atomic alloy. And we needed a refined and civil ingot. So what I did was I created the atomic alloy. Now I just need refine and simply an ingot we take one of these we put it there we head over to oh no don't throw them we head over to our forge we whack these in there in order to get the refined obsidian ingot we require a osmium compressor now how do we make one of those well that's a combiner where's the osmium compressor there it is we need all this stuff, which is easy to get, so uh, let's create it. Um, we've got the osmium compressor here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to attach it to the back of here now, because it is. I am planning on moving it into this area here, because we won't need a lot of the refined obsidian. Well, I'm hoping we don't anyway. So let's stick... What's it got? Stick the refined obsidian dust in. And there we go. Watch. We'll slowly see that, and it should... Oh, no, no, no. We need some osmium. That's why we need some osmium to power it. Luckily, we've got a few stacks of it in our chest here. Oh, no, we threw it. There we go. Now we can make our osmium compressed ingot. We'll make three of them for just for some spares in the future. Fabulous. Right, let's... Finally, creating the atomic dissembler. Absolutely majestic thing. It can do many wonders, but we've got to charge it. Charging it on our charge pad, as you can see here. Currently half full, let's head over to our mine. Now, this atomic assembler has some very, very interesting characteristics. So, if we head over to this here, so we've got some redstone ore here. If we shift and, oh no, if we shift and right click, you can see it's got slow mode, right click again. It's got fast mode. We can mine just the veins, where it mines the whole vein that it's attached to. We can do extended mine veining, which, oh, let me just take out. It's got a very powerful hit as well. So it's got extended mine veining, which we can hit there. And you can see it takes a huge, oh, it takes a huge chunk. I'm just going to get out. How rude. I'm trying to do a demonstration and a zombie shows up. But as you can see there, it takes out a huge option. I mean, just look at that. Look at how much we've just taken out there. Just from a single hit. Just look at this. Look at this. If we hold shift again, you can see we can get toggle mode off so we won't actually hit anything, so we don't damage anything. And we've got normal mode speed. Slow speed. Fast speed, which is the same as just having insta mine. Absolutely crazy crazy i mean just look at that this is why i wanted to make this tool this episode so i can mine in between episodes and get lots and lots more ore so we can build future items
I absolutely love this Atomic Dissembler. It has so many good things and possibilities. I just want to destroy everything with it. It's so tempted not to blow up my base. Well, not blow it up, but destroy my base. But that's not why we're here. We're not here to watch me just rip away the earth with this Atomic Dissembler. No, 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 no. We're here today. Why? Because we're going to be making more tools. Now we made some gas last episode with utilizing the distiller. Fantastic. We're going to be making tools today. We were going to be making the free runner, the flamethrower to set everything alight, the jetpack, the gas mask, uh, the scuba tank so we can swim underwater, and then we've got the bow and this little robot here. So where shall we start? Where shall we start? Where shall we start? Well, we're going to have to start with our crafting table. Well, the, what? How? What? 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 Can't speak. Which one are we going to make first? Well, let's go for the bow first because we need some long range we haven't had any in a while which is easy it's just an energy tablet which we got some down here Ooh, i got some with some slight energy in two enriched alloys and a lot of string yes this will need charging so we'll stay put while that charges away next on our list is the jetpack now i already have that stored so we'll have a play with that very very shortly what else is there we've already created the com configurator for our pipe system let's create the flame thrower first we're going to need a basic gas tank which is simple some osmium and some redstone and looks like i'm missing some osmium here so let's pop next door grab some osmium and create the old gas tank easy as that we want one of those bad boys we'll stick it down here this formulaic assembler is fantastic for making things uh, where were we? Oh yeah, we we're making the gas tank. Oh no, we're missing loads. We're missing tin, we're missing bronze, and we're missing some flint and steel. So now we have the bronze, we can actually make the flamethrower. Fantastic. That is another one off our checklist. So if we look here, we've got a few utilities. We've got a configurator so far, electric bow, the flamethrower, and the jetpack. What's next on our list? Let's look at the scuba suit, shall we? Ooh, a gauge drop. I'm not sure what that does. Some glass pipe. Can we make one? No, we've got no... Yes, we have got glass. Why isn't it saying we can't make any? Hmm, very strange. Anyway, let's make this gauge pipe because I... Um... Oh, it's got to be light grey. That's why we can't make it. Okay. Let's make the scuba gear so we can actually go underwater. So let's start with the gas mask. We need some brown stained glass for that. And the scuba tank. We need a basic gas tank again, so let's click that. Let's move the items. We'll create one of them. Gas mask, we need purple glass. So that's the scuba tank created there. We'll put that up at the top Hi, uh, with the other ones. Now, we need to go and get some glass, I believe. So we can either use blue glass, purple glass. Oh, lots of purple glass there. Which one we can use? Cyan glass. Can we not just use clear glass, or has it got to be a different colour? Right, let's go get some different coloured glass. So, it turns out we didn't need to do that. We just needed to change the style of glass. That was hardened glass in our inventory. There we go, we've got the gas mask now. Fantastic, there we have it. So, we've got the scuba suit, so we can go in underwater. We've got the scuba tank, that will require oxygen. And we need the free runners. So, how do we make some free runners? It's simply stored energy tablet. And... And let, uh, well, with base control circuit and an enriched alloy, click that. We are absolutely gearing up. Look at that fantastic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of machinery already. 
But that's not all. That's not all we want to create. No, 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 no. We now want to create this little robot here. This little robot requires some refined obsidian and a personalized chest. How do you make a personalized chest? With some glass and some steel ingots and some chests. So I'm actually going to make a couple of these and show you why. So we've got our chest now. All we need to do is create this. So we'll move items, get that little robot and stick him in there. We do need another one, so we'll create one of those as well for later on. And there is the second one created. But why, why did I want the personal chest? Well, here's why. So... We've obviously got our backpack ship. These backpacks are absolutely fantastic and they do what they need to do. But they only hold this amount. So what basically we've got another we've got another storage, yeah? So another twenty seven slots, I believe. But if we go over to our chest here and we click it, look how much extra storage we've got now. This is why I want to make a load more personal chests. But they are they are a tiny bit expensive to create, especially well, the personal chests aren't. Uh, the robots are. But what can we do with these little robots? What can we do with the little robots? Well, I'll tell you, these little robots are the coolest things ever. If, if we have a little charging station here, like we have here, and we place it down, <gasps> look at it! Look at the cute little thing. Now this thing can actually do quite a few. At thing. So, for instance, if we click it, uh, we can make it teleport back home. We can toggle the drop pickup mode, where if we throw something on the ground, it'll pick it up. We've got the follow me mode. What if I go away? It'll follow me mode. And say I throw some items on the floor. And I do the true toggle pickup. There you go. Look, look, it'll pick it up for me. Yes. Yes, that is the cutest little robot ever. Oh, we've got the, uh, so we can turn that to false there. As you can see there, we've still got it true. We can rename it. We'll keep it a robot for now. We can make teleport home. It's got its own crafting station built in. Obviously, it's got its storage there. It's got its own smelting. It's got its own, what's that? What's that? Anvil. It's got everything. This is a little robot tool that comes in everything. So let's send it home, actually. Let's send it home. Home? Maybe I have to click follow me off. False. Home. Wait, you should just teleport here. Ah, anyway, we'll figure that out later date. That is absolutely perfect. And just to pick it up, uh, I've got enough space. We simply... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, wait, he's only got half a heart, but... Okay, I was pressing the wrong button there to make him go home. It's obviously teleport back home. I was just clicking the home button, which sends him back to here. Well, there you can see he's nice and charged there now. Can I pick him up yet? Can I pick him up yet? Nope. If we click that, he jumps back onto his pad. So that robot is now down permanently. We've got a little pet there, which is absolutely fantastic. He's cute and adorable. And we'll, we'll take him for a ride later on. What else? Have, what other tools did we actually make here? Well, we've obviously made the scuba suit. And these literally just go and attach to us. So let's go find a body of water and go for a swim. So here we are at the beach at the seaside town in our very, very west village. So let's put on the scuba suit here. It replaces the items on our chest. So if we put the scuba tank on and the gas mask, you can see that's what we look like. That's what we currently look like with the scuba tank on the back. But I've just realized there's no oxygen in the scuba tank. So all we do is literally go to the electrolytic separator where we are getting the hydrogen and the oxygen there. And all we do is we would put the scuba tank in here. We'd put it in here and let the oxygen go into it. Now it's going to take a bit of time to flow. Why? Because we are filling this one up at the moment. As you can see the oxygen is creeping up. So we're going to wait for here for this to slowly fill. As you can see the hydrogen's going up. So we could maybe, maybe... Put the flamethrower in there and get the hydrogen. Yes, look at that. We're filling up our flamethrower with some fuel in there. So we'll keep these both in there for the meantime and watch them build up. Let's move on to something else. So we'll take the scuba... No, I'll take the gas mask off anyway and we'll put our armor back on there. But we'll switch to these items here. The bow. 
and the jetpack. So let's take a look at the free runners first. The free runners obviously go on your feet. These help you if you are going from height and you take a big jump. They will stop you from falling, which comes in real, real handy when we have the jetpack on. So the jetpack again just attaches to you. And there we have it. This is what the jetpack looks like when it's on your body. Look at that. And the free run is there. Absolutely amazing. So all we should do is be able to tap this. And then it'll fly us up. Look at that. And we can fly up. If you hold shift and do it, you can sort of hover there. But you can pretty much walk forward, go where you need to go. Forward, backwards, side, to side. And then the free runners, if we go really, really high, for instance, go as high as we can. Whoa, we're getting high now. We'll go to 200. We'll go to 200 with this jetpack. This is absolutely amazing. And then we let it drop. We shouldn't take any damage. Boom, like that. And why didn't we take any damage? It is because... The free runners actually stop us from taking damage when we fall. So these are a really good thing to have on. Especially when we're using the jetpack. Whoop. If we actually click the G in this mode, we can actually enable and disable hover mode. So we can actually do some work. So it saves us changing into the bat now and then when we're doing high builds like the one at the side. But obviously in the bottom left hand corner it does use some hydrogen, not a lot. If we actually click the H, it brings up the hat menu. But if we go into here now, you'll see that these legs are disabled. If they click if we click H again, it brings up the hat menu, but it also re enables the free runners. Where are they gone? There they are. Free runners, regular mode. Well, these are definitely slowly slowly filling up so we'll leave them in there now till they're all full and we'll go test out the bow now the bow is obviously powered by energy as well and this is what it looks like in my hand with my armor oh i look so good as a samurai but how does it work well let's go find an object to shoot out and um, we just happen to have this little mini scars in here so it works as a normal bow we're obviously going to need ammunition for it so if I go into one of my bags here, I should have, wait, I've got the wrong bag. There we go. We'll click this one. There we go. I should have some ammunition in here. And then we point, shoot. As you can see, there's the animation and fire. And there it goes. And it works just the same as a normal bow. But instead of it running out and obviously not being breaking and we're not being able to use the bow anymore, it just simply runs out of power. All things in the mechanism rod are powered. Let's go check on the uh, scuba gear and the flatterer. Here. here we are once again at the very west pillage. Pillage? Village. Where we've got a few unsuspecting pigs around us and some lots of, well, lots and lots of flammable, flammable buildings. So what are we going to do here? Well, we are going to test out the flamethrower, which is currently on right now. So if I click this... As you can see, it's harvesting, almost harvesting the apples, but nothing's getting set on fire. Why is that? Because it's type of mode we're in. So if we right click that, there we go. We got some cut pot chops there. It, it, we have the ability to just, well, not annihilate, but we have the ability just to uh, set entities on fire. But that's not what we want to do, just do, no, is it? So there we go. I figured out how to do it. The it's actually noise there. So if we go to heat, for instance, and we've got some coal here, we can literally use the heat and actually use it as a mining tool. And it'll break. Oh, and nearly set myself on fire. Then it will generally break everything that we need, as if it was a furnace. So we go up to some rock stone here. It'll actually start creating. Did I pick any of that up? So we've got some tallow there. Wait, wait, what? Was I not picking any of that up then? There we go. So for instance, let's make, we're making circuit plates here. If we hit that ore there, it'll break the ore and it'll turn it into something else. 
As you can see down there, if we hit shift P again to change it again, we've got Inferno mode. Now Inferno is the fun mode here. So let's take this take this structure for instance. Let's see what would happen if we decided to... In fact, we'll start with the small, small one first. Let's see what would happen if we used Inferno mode. As you can see, it's starting to set everything on fire. It's destroying everything in its path. I mean, what what is that? What did we just pick up there? What can we what can we get rid of? Um, um, we we don't don't need the guava. We've got some fragmented carbon there. Just by turning all these. Oh, we're getting hit. There we go. We can set him on fire. Look at that, easy. We can set the ground on fire with Inferno mode, so we can do a ring of fire around us to make sure we're safe. Look at that. Look at that. So we would never have to worry about night again with this flamethrower. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I probably should step away a bit, though, because I have just set a few things on fire. I'm having too much fun with this. Too much fun. And would you look at that. We are at the ocean. We've had to dig our way back up because those exploding creepers like to, you know, they like to test you. Oh, look at me. I'm in my scuba suit. Shall we jump in and go for a swim? Apparently so because we're getting attacked already. Let's go down. Let's go down. Look at that. Here we go now. We're in our scuba area. It currently, if you look in the bottom left, it's currently off. But if we go P, shift P. That's not good. It's not working. It's not working. Scuba mode is not working. Panic. I have started to notice something though. Even though I've made all these great tools. All these great tools. We can even put our bags in there. But I have noticed something. This just is not powerful enough. And is not producing enough oxygen in order for us to pump everything through. Now, I've added a few more windmills because we were running out of power at one stage, but it's still not powerful. So, what can we do about it? Well, there, we could make a whole new ones and uh, upgrade it, break it and things like that. Or, we could do this. And have a look here. We've got some speed upgrades. Energy upgrade, filter upgrade, muffling upgrade, gas upgrade and anchor upgrade. That means the anchor upgrade keeps the chunk loaded, etc, etc. Those are those upgrades. We also have these upgrades as well to in increase the tiers that they're in. So we've got the basic tier, the advanced tier, the elite tier, and the ultimate tier. So if we take a look at all our machines that we currently have, these are just normal. Uh, we've got the, where are we, crusher. They're not basic at all. See, smelter, metallurgic, metallurgic. So we need to create the basic upgrade just to make into the basic tier. Now it only requires this. So I'm going to start making these and start upgrading. We have upgraded our machines here from the from the normal to the basic. Unfortunately, we can't upgrade the electrolyte separator, but we can in install upgrades there, but we'll come on to that one. I've upgraded the basic purifying chamber that gives us an extra three slots, the crusher that gives us an extra three, enrichment factory, and again, the uh, smelting factory. We also now have this option to auto sort, so it auto sorts in the inventory and where it goes. The transport config stays the same, there, that doesn't get touched. But we have a few more items here where we can literally change whether we want it. What pipe it's going to, what input, what output. We've got, obviously, the uh, power down there. So nothing that's changes here. So let's look at upgrading the electrolytic separator so it's more powerful. Okay, so I have actually upgraded this speed here. If we have a look now and click that, I've upgraded upgraded the speed five times utilizing this speed upgrade here i've just put five a minute and it's now at times 32 i mean also utilizing the energy upgrade as well so it uh, doesn't require a lot of energy because as you can see there it is now smashing through it 
Also make sure when you're doing this, make sure that's on dump and excess unless you are actually collecting the hydrogen. In here now you can see that it is rapidly, rapidly changing that. But the only issue we're having now is the current energy. There's just not enough energy getting passed through the cable here and by these windmills. So we need to look at the future in trying to change this. Because if we look at one of these windmills, it produces, well, it's producing 9, well, 58, well, 100, 305 power, 58, 384 RF output. And that is just getting utilized by all of this because this requires 130 QRF. And this requires 48 QRF. So these might need personal, personal power supplies. in the future but i'm going to end the episode there wow we have done a lot of upgrades with our tools and had a lot of fun playing with them today i know i have in the next episode we're going to look at maybe upgrading our power that well we, we really really require especially with all the amounts of ores and that we've got passing through because it's just just not enough we may go into the nuclear zone for that or we may look at utilizing the energy cubes here for actually storing energy so also I want to look at the reactors which we can utilize in this mod hopefully hopefully get something from there but in the meantime I am going to make sure i upgrade all of my utilities for the next episode because we will be using well we will be building the digital miner which requires 16 qrf so we'll see that will definitely need its own personal power supply so we're going to build that next episode and hopefully start mining underneath and collecting the required ores for the ultimate reactor so Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode because I have definitely enjoyed making it for you. This has been the Tool episode. I've been Nevs Gaming. You've been amazing. Toodaloo. And I'll see all you wonderful people in a few. Keep exploring. Good.